A second possible damp system will arise when we have a critically damp system, and this is going to happen when our damping ratio is equal to 1, meaning that the roots of our characteristic equation are real but repeating. So when this is the case, we are going to find that that general solution to our problem, x of t, is going to look like this. Now here, with a critically damp system, we see that the form of our solution has an exponential that is going to decay over time. As t goes to infinity, this term is going to go towards zero, meaning that x of t is also going to go to zero. We have this extra t appearing here, which is going to come from that solution to the ODE when we have repeated roots. And because we have just an exponential here, we do not have trig functions, we don't have a sine or a cosine, we will not see oscillations in this system. In contrast to what we saw for the underdamp system that had a cosine term which gave us oscillations and an exponential which provided the decay. As we know from system dynamics, critically damp systems and the same for overdamp systems are not going to have oscillations in them. Now we can see how do we derive this solution. So again, we're going to start at the step where we already formed our characteristic equation and we already found the roots of the characteristic equation. And when it's critically damp, the roots are going to be repeated. They're both going to be negative zeta omega n. So this is kind of a special case when we're working with ODEs that this means that our, the form of our solution will look a little bit different than what it looked like for the underdamp system, the undamped system that we started with, and what we're going to see next with the overdamped system. In this case, the general form of the solution is going to look like C1e to the lambda t plus C2t e to the lambda t. So again, this is the case where our lambdas are repeated is going to have this form that's going to have this t term in front of the second exponential. We don't see this when we don't have a critically damped system. So for this specific one, I'll put in our value of lambda so we can see what it looks like. x of t is c1 e to the negative zeta omega n t plus c2 t e to the negative zeta omega n t. So we need to find this c1 and c2 and again, we're going to do that using our initial conditions. Our x of 0 is going to be x naught, and our x dot of 0 is going to be x naught dot. So we can apply our first initial condition on the position. So x evaluated at 0, we are going to have c1 times e to the 0 power. Well, e to the 0 is just 1. Plus c2 times 0 times e to the zero is one, but that term is going to go away. That's just going to be zero as well. So our first equation is x zero equals c one, and we know that that is x naught. So that one's easy enough. Now we want to take the time derivative so that we can apply our second initial condition. So I want to find x dot of t. All right, let's take the x of t expression and differentiate with respect to time. So for the first term, uh, we're going to have a c1. We have the derivative of an exponential, which is going to drop its exponent out in front. And then we're left with what's left over. Plus, now here we do have a, uh, a, a product rule that we have to employ. So it's going to be, well, the c2 will come along. So the derivative of the first the time derivative of t is just 1, so e to the negative zeta omega nt, plus the derivative of the second times the first. So we're going to again drop that exponential down, which will be a negative zeta omega n. Uh, this is c2. We still have a t here, and we still have an e to the negative zeta omega n times t. That's the general derivative now to put in our initial condition on velocity. So evaluating everything at t equals 0, we'll have here a negative c1 zeta omega n, e to the 0 is going to be 1, plus a c2, uh, we have e to the 0 is just going to be 1, so just c2 here, and then the third term, t is going to be 0, so the third term will just be 0, and that will go away. Uh, and we know that this is equal to x dot naught. So actually c1 we already have the solution for. 
is x0. So we can rearrange this second equation a little bit more because uh, we know c1 is just x0 zeta omega n plus c2 equals x dot 0. So c2 must equal x dot 0 plus x0 zeta omega n. Now we can put the c1 and the c2 back into our expression for x of t and find our solution. x of t equals, so c1, that's just x0, e to the negative zeta omega n t plus c2. times t times e to the negative zeta omega n t. And we can simplify this a little bit since we they both have that exponential term. I'm going to take that to the outside. So we'll be left with x naught plus x naught dot plus x naught zeta omega n times t. And on the outside I can put the exponential term and we get exactly what we had on the slide here. And this was derived using what we know from solving second order ODEs. So briefly returning to the slide for it written in a nicer way, this is going to be our general solution when we have a critically damped system and we have free vibrations. And we're going to see later, this is also then just the homogeneous solution for critically damped systems under general forcing that we'll encounter in the next lecture.